The Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild, Part 18. Reassembling the beam and the Watts parallel motion. In this first part of the episode, I'm bolting the first of the bearing plumber blocks to the top of the beam. And no, I'm not using any washers, so when it comes down to the part where I tighten the bolt, I tighten it once and quickly, so it doesn't scrape the paint off. But at the moment, I'm not tightening the bolts. I'm going to fit both of the plumber blocks and the beam, then I will nip up the bolts at the end of the sequence. You may be wondering, why am I not using washers? A washer would stop the paint being marked. Yes, it would. But when I look at full-size steam engines, I seldom see washers. In some cases you get them, but not here. So as to avoid confusion, I wrote CYL underneath the base with an arrow that points towards the cylinder. The engineering on this engine is sort of average, and the column only fits one way round. Once I fitted both of the plumber blocks to the top of the column, and this time, as you can see on screen, I'm using a socket, I went round and gave them all a final nip up, a final tighten. I have to be careful with this job. The actual depth of thread available in the top of the beam is not excessive. And if I over tighten these mounting bolts, there is a possibility that the threads could strip in the top of the beam. Once the beam was mounted on the column and the bolts tightened, I checked the alignment with the piston rod. And everything looks okay. Whoever machined the beam went a bit mad and took too much off it. I think this was because the beam was not in alignment with the cylinder, so there wasn't any room to put spacers in around the fitting on the top of the piston rod. So the beam was turned to the same thickness as the fitting on the piston rod itself. Time now to permanently fix the support column to the base. The column mountings consist of bolts coming through from underneath, the base is threaded, and this works OK. And originally the cylinder was mounted in the same way, but it was in the wrong position, so I had to move the positions in the base to allow me to move the cylinder. The cylinder is still held to the base using nuts and bolts, but unlike the beam, the bolts for the cylinder go straight through. They are no longer screwed into the threaded holes in the base that were in the wrong place. In this clip I'm fitting the two side arms which are known as the entablature. And the purpose of these arms is to hold the Watts parallel motion at one end. Please Google Watts parallel motion if you want more information about it. It's a fiendishly clever design, very simple, until you come to put it together and then for some reason I find it very easy to get confused. I don't have a drawing for this engine, but to be honest I am cheating slightly. Just off camera I have a really old beam engine and I'm looking at the way that is set up. A good idea perhaps, but no, because the watts parallel motion on the old beam engine is to accommodate a much wider beam. So the spacers are very different, but I'm not altogether unintelligent, so I've figured it out. The cross pins that hold the watts parallel motion together are not good, they're a little bit on the short side. I do need to machine at least two of them and make them a bit longer. The main thing is though, look how in line the beam is with the entablature. Now everything lines up, the piston rods in the middle and nothing fouls. I'm screwing the inlet pipe and the valve back in place and I've connected an airline to it. As I rock the beam back and forth by hand, the piston's getting slightly tight towards the top so I may need to make minor adjustments to where the cylinder sits. The first thing to do is oil the vital parts. I haven't bothered with the watts paddle on motion because this is a very short test. But once the engine is fully rebuilt and hopefully runs, I will oil every moving part. Here goes the first test run. That's encouraging, at least the beam rocks back and forth. Here it is in slow motion. And even slower. In this episode I was going to include the making of the pins for the watts parallel motion, but I made this at a time when my lathe was not working very well. It looks alright in this clip, but it isn't. I received a message from one of my Patreon supporters, a man called Craig, 
and he asked me to give a quick shout out for his brother Carl and his grandfather Charles, who unfortunately is not in good health. It's good to hear from my viewers and Craig is currently rebuilding a 5 inch gauge schools class locomotive. And that's it from me, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.